graph related to rate of reactions. Eh? Uh, first of all, okay, we need to know the graph of the products or reactants changes against time. Eh? Okay. Now, in the chemical reactions, eh, you need to know that the reactants will decrease over time. What is reactants? So let's say we have uh, reactions that involve A and B, A plus B, and the products is C and D. Okay. So these two, this is called the reactant. Eh? Okay. And this is called the product. Okay. And during a reactions, the reactants will reduce. Eh? Okay, why? Because the reactants after react, they become C and D already. Eh? Okay, so the amount of A and B will reduce and the amount of uh, C and D will increase. The amount of the products will increase. So the reactants will decrease, reactants will decrease, but the products will increase. Another thing which is important is the rate of reactions. The rate of reactions will also decrease. The rate of reactions also decrease. Why? Because the concentration if it involves a solutions okay the concentrations of the solutions will decrease because this one become less and less the concentrations reduce and also if it involves solid the total surface area also decreases and this cause the rate of reactions decreases so three things that you need to know in the reactions the reactants will decrease the products will increase and then the rate of reactions will decreases over time because uh, we need these three information for us to uh, to sketch a graph. Huh? Because in these chapters, uh, in exams, okay, usually your teachers like to ask you to sketch graph. So you need to know, okay, the, the reactants reduce, product increase, and the rate of reactions will decrease. Huh? Okay, so uh, we will see how to sketch a graph. So that is for the changes during the chemical reactions. This of reactions equals to the gradients of the graph. Okay, so in a graph of a quantity of products or reactants over time, quantities of products or reactants over time, the rate of reaction is equal to the gradients of the graph. Okay, what does this mean? Let's say we have a graph, and uh, let's say this is a product, and this is a time, okay, and after you do an experiment, okay, you get, you have two experiments, experiment one and experiment two, so this is experiment one, and this is experiment two. Now, from the two graphs that you get, okay, can you tell which one, which experiments has higher rate of reactions? Okay, so this is a, this is a graph of products over time, eh? products or reactants over time. This is products over time, okay? So we have two experiments, experiment one, experiment two. Now we just learned that the rate of reactions the rate of reaction is equal to the gradients of the graph. For these two experiment, which one has higher rate? Now the answer is experiment one. Why? Because you see the gradient. Okay, because it has a, its gradient is higher. Okay, and the gradient represent the rate of reactions. So higher gradients, the rate is also higher, okay? Because the gradients represents the rate of reaction. Actually, the gradient is equal to the rate of reactions, okay? So the gradient is higher, the rate is higher. This one, the gradient is lower, okay? Smaller gradients, and therefore the rate of reaction is lower. Let's see uh, this example, eh? example one. Okay, example one, they say the reactions between dilute hydrochloric acid and excess marble. Okay, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and then react with marbles. What's, what's the chemical name for marble? Calcium carbonate, CaCO3, that's right, okay. Marbles or limestones, huh? okay, uh, there are calcium carbonates. Okay. So calcium carbonate, Ca, CO3, okay. And then uh, the products will be calcium chloride, okay. And then uh, release carbon dioxide gas and water, okay. To balance the equation, we put a two here. And then uh, we are told that the marble is in excess, okay. The marble is in excess. 
and then they want us to sketch the graph of the mass of the marbles against time okay a they want us to sketch the graph of mass of marbles against time so mass let's say mass in gram mass of the marbles eh? okay so what do you think do you think uh, the mass of marbles will decrease or increase the mass of marbles it will decrease or increase it will decrease right uh, yes that's correct okay that's correct eh? it will decrease over time okay time and uh, let's say in seconds okay now it will decrease eh? but uh, I, I draw a few lines and then you tell me which one is correct okay let's say the first one is a uh, curve is a curve uh, the second one let me use another color it's also the curve and the third one is a straight line okay so a a b c okay now this three line it shows that the mass decreases over time eh? okay a also so shows the mass decreases over time b also shows the mass decreases over time and c also shows the mass decreases over time okay which one should be the answer a b c which one is the correct answer but the answer is a yeah? okay let me erase this okay so the answer is a let me redraw it again okay okay now why why is it a but not straight lines huh? okay why not straight line now if it's a straight line means that the gradient is constant gradient does not change for a straight line eh? for a straight lines the gradient is constant gradient constant means that the gradient does not change okay the gradient does not change but this is not true why because just now we have learned that the rate of reactions will decrease over time okay so we have learned that the rate of reactions will decrease over time but the graph, if it's straight lines, the straight line shows that the gradient is constant. Gradient is constant means that the rate of reaction is constant over time. And that is not true. Okay? That's not correct. Okay? So straight line is not correct. Okay? If straight line is not correct, then why this curve is correct? Okay, now you see this curve, okay? Initially, here, the gradient is high. Okay? And then the gradient decreases over times. It becomes flatter and flatter, and finally it becomes totally flat. Totally flat means that the gradient equal to zero. Okay, the gradient equal to zero. Okay, so so this graph shows that the gradients of the the gradients of the lines that decreases over time means that the rate of reactions decreases over time. Okay, because during a reaction, uh, the rate of reactions decrease over time because the concentrations of the solutions decreases over time the concentrations of this hcl and the decreases over time uh, so this is the correct answer huh? the gradients decreases over time it's a curve huh? it's a curve okay and then uh, there's another question here there's another question here why this line here okay finally it becomes flat but why don't it touch this uh, horizontal axis why don't it touch the horizontal axis here that is because calcium carbonate or the, the marbles uh, is in excess in excess means that it's it's more than enough for it to uh, react so it means that after the reactions we still have some calcium carbonate okay we have excess calcium carbonate so after reaction we still have some excess carb uh, carbonates that haven't reacted eh? so therefore it does not go to zero okay and that's why yeah, that's why this line it does not touch zero okay so you see when you are asked to sketch a graph okay first you must that first you must determine okay it will decrease or increase if it's a reactance it decreases over it, it decreases over time but if it's a product then it will increase over time one second you must determine the shape of the graph okay it's a straight line or a curve or curve is, uh, is a curve to, to which directions for the rate of reactions okay because the rate of reactions decreases over time eh? so the gradients of the curve need to decreases over time okay and the last one the last one will the line okay 
finally touch the horizontal axis or not. If it's excess, it will not touch the horizontal axis. But if it's not excess, then it will touch the horizontal axis. Okay? Mm -hmm. So your teacher will check these three things. Eh? Okay? Whether it decreases the curve, uh, the shape of the curve, and whether it touch the horizontal axis or not. Then, the, then uh, your teacher will give you marks based on this. And then let's see B, the volumes of carbon dioxide against time. Okay, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the product. Carbon dioxide is the product. This is for B. And the volume of centimeter cube uh, times in, in seconds. Now the products, just now we have learned that, okay, the products will increase over time. Eh? The products will increase over time. Again, I want you to tell me which lines of the graph is correct. Okay, so now we have A, B, C. Let's say this is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, A, B, C. Which one is the correct answer for the graph of uh, the volumes of carbon dioxide against time? At least you, you, don't, you don't tell it's B, okay? We know that it's not a straight line, okay? Because the rate of reactions changes against time. Eh? It changes against times. Okay, so we rule out B. B is out, okay? B is out, so it's not B, okay? But the answer is A, yeah? The answer is A, but not C, yeah? Okay, that is because the gradients, you see, the gradients of A decreases over time. Okay, means that the rate of reaction decreases over time. That's what happens. Okay, the rate of reaction it must decrease over time. Eh? But for C, the gradient increase. You see, initially it's flat, okay, and then it becomes steeper and steeper and steeper. Okay, so the gradient increases over time. Eh? But this one initially is steeper, is steeped, but then so it be flatter and flatter and flatter and finally become flat. Okay. So the gradient decreases over time. This one, the gradient increases over time. Gradient increases over time, that's not correct. Okay, that's not correct. Huh? So the, the gradient must decrease over time. Okay, so the answer is A. Yeah? Uh, so you see, that's how we sketch the graph. Huh? For product, it increases, but the gradients of the graph must decrease over time. Okay, okay. C, they want us to plot the graph of the concentrations of hydrochloric acids against time so this one this is the uh, reactants uh, reactants and uh, the reactants will decrease over time let's draw um, concentrations denoted by the symbol m okay molarity this is concentrations and then the unit is mole per decimeter cube eh? and this is time seconds okay and uh, we know that okay the graph should look something like this because it, it will decrease over time and the gradients will decrease. Eh? Okay, and this time it touched the horizontal axis. So you compare this and this. Eh? Okay, if it's in excess, so after the reaction we still have some calcium carbonates left. So uh, it, it does not become zero. The mass does not become zero. Okay, but for HCl, if this is excess, this this will finish the react. Eh? Okay, if this excess, this one, sure, it will finish react. And after finish react, then the concentrations will become zero. So it must touch the horizontal axis. Okay, so when you sketch the graph of reactants against time, you must be very careful. Okay, so whether it touch the horizontal axis or it does not touch. Excess, it does not touch. Okay, but if it's not excess, it will finish react, then it will touch the horizontal axis, eh? the concentrations will become zero at the ends of the reactions. Okay, eh? so that is for C. And then for D, they want us to plot the graph of uh, concentrations of calcium chloride. Calcium chlorides against time. Okay, calcium chloride is the product. Eh? Okay, so the graph will look similar to B. Okay, similar to B. Exact actually, it's uh, exactly the same only the axis is not the same, okay? So let me plot here, okay? The, whole, the vertical axis is the molarity and uh, unit is mole per decimeter cube. And this is time, seconds, and then the, the graph looks something like this. 
Okay, now so this is how the graph of the reactants or the products against times look like. Okay, and make sure that you know how to sketch the graph. Eh? Okay, so three things that you need to know. The reactance decreases over time, the products increases over time, and the rate of reactions decreases over time. Therefore, the gradients of the graph decreases over time.